Welcome. Hello again. It's time for our daily reflection uh, as we make our way through uh, book four of the Psalms. And we've reached Psalm 102 today, which is very different from uh, the other Psalms that we've been looking at so far. And it's uh, it's different, not least just because it's quite a bit longer than some of the others. So let's read through uh, the whole Psalm. A prayer of one overwhelmed with trouble, pouring out problems before the Lord. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my plea. Don't turn away from me in my time of distress. Bend down to listen and answer me quickly when I call to you. For my days disappear like smoke and my bones burn like red-hot coals. My heart is sick, withered like grass, and I've lost my appetite. Because of my groaning, I'm reduced to skin and bones. I'm like an owl in the desert, like a little owl in a far-off wilderness. I lie awake, lonely as a solitary bird on the roof. My enemies taunt me day after day. They mock and curse me. I eat ashes for food. My tears run down into my drink because of your anger and wrath. For you have picked me up and thrown me out. My life passes as swiftly as the evening shadows. I am withering away like grass. But you, O Lord will sit on your throne forever. Your fame will endure to every generation. You will arise and have mercy on Jerusalem. And now is the time to pity her. Now is the time you promised to help. For your people love every stone in her walls and cherish even the dust in her streets. Then the nations will tremble before the Lord. The kings of the earth will tremble before his glory. For the Lord will rebuild Jerusalem. He will appear in his glory. He will listen to the prayers of the destitute. He will not reject their pleas. Let this be recorded for future generations, so that a people not yet born will praise the Lord. Let them, the Lord look, tell them, the Lord looked down from his heavenly sanctuary. He looked down to earth from heaven to hear the groans of the prisoners, to release those condemned to die. And so the Lord's fame will be celebrated in Zion, his praises in Jerusalem, when multitudes gather together and kingdoms come to worship the Lord. He broke my strength in midlife, cutting off short my days. But I cried to him, O oh my God, who lives forever, don't take my life while I am so young. Long ago you laid the foundations of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing. You will change them like a garment and discard them. But you are always the same. You will live forever. The children of your people will live in security. Their children's children will thrive in your presence. Uh, quite a, a long psalm. Hopefully um, you've already spent a little time uh, reading through uh, and thinking through the, the structure and how it, it flows and you can see that there are there, there's an obvious movement of mood and and, and the person's uh, what the person is speaking about and that kind of thing. Um, uh, note the heading. The heading tells us uh, immediately that what we're reading about this is um, very much a, a psalm of someone suffering. Um, verses 1 to 10 uh, talked about the, the shortness of human life and uh, and the sickness and misery of human life. Uh, and then verses 12 to 17 are about the, the greatness of God um, and indeed the greatness of his people among the nations because they are his people. Uh, verses um, 18 to 22, the, the Lord hears uh, his people's prayers. And, and then that final section, 23 to the end, um, uh, strange, I thought that he broke my strength in midlife. I might die young, but uh, Lord, you and your children uh, will grow, will live forever. Um, it's a very painful prayer. Uh, in whatever circumstance it was written in, uh, clearly there is real suffering going on. Uh, this person has been beaten and mocked and cursed uh, and seems to be facing death. So it's it's grim, it's a difficult uh, read. And yet, even within that, praising God uh, that he is one who hears uh, the prayers of his people uh, and comes to bring blessing. Now, the interesting thing, that I've highlighted those verses there in yellow for a very particular reason. They're quoted 
uh, pretty much word for word in Hebrews chapter 1. Uh, and there uh, we're told that they are uh, spoken by God to the Son. They are spoken by the Father to Jesus. Uh, so it's interesting uh, in, in Hebrew and in Greek that there's no uh, quotation marks. Um, so the, when uh, the translators take these passages, they have to decide, uh, well, that clearly someone is saying something. Uh, but where do you where do you finish the quotation is usually the hard part according to hebrews uh, those three verses in yellow uh, 25 26 27 they are said by the father to the son uh, and so this whole psalm who who is suffering then what's well, the lord jesus this psalm actually belongs to jesus this is something from his lips um, all the psalms are but this one really really does speak out that way and in fact, it's, it's a helpful thing to do to read all the Psalms as Jesus himself would have read them. Uh, so um, the blessing that comes in verse 28, the children of your people will live in security. Their children's children will thrive in your presence. That gift, that joy, that security comes because Jesus has suffered. So you can read the whole Psalm again and read it through Jesus' heart and mind, his experience, his pain, suffering, rejection, how he was mocked. And you see something of his pain. There's something of Psalm 22 in this. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There, there's something of that, that pain um, here in Psalm 102. So um, th those verses are so important that I'd spent a, a little bit longer than perhaps uh, uh, you might have expected on the, the work it out element because it's so Christ-centred. In terms of working it in, um, how these things uh, affect our heart we'll play for, from a praise point of view we can praise god for his eternity praise god for jesus suffering uh, is there anything we need to repent of well we can read a, a psalm like that and immediately think of our own suffering and this is my prayer and if there's something to repent of it's perhaps um uh we, we tend to make things too much about ourselves when really this is a psalm about the lord jesus and his suffering for us so that immediately lifts our, our thinking away from ourselves and uh, and to him. There's something to repent of there. Uh, yeah, the thinking too much about me. Um, okay, so over the next week we're going to be thinking more about the, the thought of lift it up. So as we come to a, a psalm, we want to meditate on God's... Or come to any text, we want to meditate on God's word. We want to work it out. Intellectually, what does it say? We want to work it in. Emotionally, how... Does that speak to me and, and affect me? But then we want to lift it up. And that's where we'll spend um, a little bit more time thinking through what that really means. Um, it, it's interesting. When you when you pray, uh, hopefully you've been praying uh, after these uh, daily reflections, hopefully you've noticed something about your own prayers, that you're praying differently. Because what you're actually doing is responding to God and what he has to say. So if prayer is a conversation with God, you're letting him speak first. You're listening to him and responding to what he has to say. Think about the way that you've been praying after these daily reflections. Um, if you've been taking notes, uh, I recommend that. I find that helpful. Uh, hopefully uh, you would as well. Uh, and I, I find it helpful actually to write down a, a, a prayer. Um, because it, it sort of solidifies your thoughts into concrete ideas and words. I find that helpful. Um, but however you've been praying, whatever you've been praying, would you ever have prayed that way about those things if you hadn't first meditated on God's word? And you go back to Psalm 1 and that very first idea that we had where we want to be uh, blessed like a tree by uh, living water and drawing that water up and bearing fruit as we spend time meditating that's what we're doing isn't it we can see it in our own prayers we we draw up on god's word and it bears fruit in prayers that we simply wouldn't have prayed before that means we're changing our thoughts we're changing our our our, our emotions and our responses and, and our thoughts about god our approach to god is being more shaped by god himself by his word that has to be a healthy thing. 
his word is so diverse as well. So we want to be doing more of this uh, across more of the Bible. Uh, and we want to be doing it for years. We saw that in, in the psalm the other day uh, about how we, even in our old age, we can bear fruit. So this is a this is a a, a skill, a habit, a, a way of life for us to be meditating on God's word. Super. So uh, that's Psalm 102. Um, it, it's time to pray. There won't be um, a daily reflection on Sunday morning, uh, but we'll be back on Sunday on on Monday morning. But for now, let's pray. Our great God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for these psalms. The psalms that that speak so much of Christ's own suffering. We we know it intellectually, Lord, and as we feel the emotion of these words, we, we feel something of the, the the pain that he went through for us. How his life was cut off. And yet as a result of that, you do hear our prayers because we come in Christ. We thank you that you raised him. And now, as you live forever, as Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever, so now we live in him and we have a hope of eternity. Our great God and Father, we thank you that you are a God who speaks to us and you inform us and you change us as we feed on your word and bring these things back to you. We pray that we would be a people who grow. Teach us to meditate on your word, that we would be the person of Psalm 1 who is greatly blessed. And may we bear fruit in our prayers, our thoughts, our hearts, our attitudes, the way we deal with people in our own homes, in our own minds, and indeed as we uh, speak with others. Lord, may your kingdom come. We pray that you would indeed glorify yourself in us and through us. In Jesus' name. Amen.